Michelle has kindly agreed to take a question or two or comments. So the floor is open for those questions or comments. Please raise your flag so that we can see them. Thank you. Simplemente levante sus carteles, por favor, para que los veamos. It looks like no one is bueno, has questions ah, about this. Mrs. Grasa Michelle, thank you very much for, let me repeat. Thank you very much, Mrs. Grasa Michelle, for having paid us the honor of coming here and sharing with us your experience, which is a very rich and lengthy one. We are always emotional, and I have no doubt that all my colleagues have a lot of things to share. Thank you very much for having spoken about migration and migratory flow, which is not only a migratory uh, movement from south to north, but also a migration flow which has become a global one. I am still very emotional. I apologize. Once again, I think that the entire African continent is supporting your appeal that we need to review migration governance. We need to include the question of migration in the post-2015 development agenda, and we need to support the efforts being uh, made by IOM in this regard. Thank you very much, Mrs. Grasa Michelle. I think this. I think this was more a comment than than really a, a, a question. What I, what I would like to say maybe is uh, uh, based on my experience uh, in Africa is that most of times uh, development civil society organizations uh, are not engaged in the debate on uh, on, uh, on, on, on migration in the sense again of. Uh, making this a national agenda in which it's not only of government. Government has to improve the laws and the systems, but to explain and to conscientize people on what kind of risks you can take and how do you take them and to protect themselves from the criminality which can be involved because of smugglers and all that stuff. I don't think that debate does exist in some of our countries, even in countries of origin. So I think which we call of origin in numbers, okay? But I also think even in the cases we are receiving, let me give an example of my president in Mozambique. Northern part of Mozambique is uh, now receiving lots of people coming from all, as I said, from, Bengal, from Bangladesh, sometimes they come through Ethiopia, etc. You have Somalis because of conflict, and people began to complain, to say, oh no, now we are having these people, they are taking our jobs, they are taking our women, they are taking etc., etc., etc. And the president said, wait a second, he raised his hands exactly as I'm doing. He said, wait a second, are we Mozambicans now going to raise the issue of migration in this country? Do you remember where we were during this, the, the struggle for our own liberation? Do you remember when we had the conflict in Mozambique, how many millions of people went to neighboring countries? But even today, how many the, the Mozambicans are living now, they are living in Switzerland, in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, in neighboring countries. When we say this, it's not because uh, we, we, are just, we know there's a huge migration happening. We have people who speak French we never had. I mean, from Mali, from Senegal, etc. It is fine. We just have to learn to live with this. But communities many times are not engaged in this debate. They're not engaged in this debate. And I think what is happening in our communities at back home is what is happening here in Europe as well. And that's why I appeal really to make of this part of the agenda to say human family, you are 
are much darker, you are much lighter. You, 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 when you pray, you say God and you say Allah. Maybe you are like me, you use, I mean, the traditional practices of religion. It is fine to be who you are, and it is fine to be wherever you want. Human family has to learn this. Otherwise, I don't think we, we are making of a big problem, which actually it, we should welcome as a part of a, putting into practice those very beautiful principles which we have signed up. Now it's, a, it's the moment of truth. The moment of truth is to practice this in our daily life and to accept one another even when people are different from who I am. And who said that I'm better than the other one? By the way, only when you come to know the other part, you'll be able to enrich yourself. So these fears, I think they have to be challenged. And they can be challenged by society itself. It's not a, 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 alone a question of laws and institutions. But it was a comment, not a question. I don't know whether there's any other. <laughs> I can see somebody there, yeah. Let's see. Ambassador Sierra Leone. Thank you very much for that Merci. most comprehensive um, um, presentation. I think um, us listening to you are very proud <laughs> to see somebody make such a good presentation. And thank you also for all the experience and all you have done in the world in terms of children, etc. The question I wanted to ask is in relation to migration and the question of visas, the need for visas. I know that you are talking about um, even within Africa. Some of us who come from countries like Syria, and we know how difficult it is even to obtain a visa even within Africa. So I just wanted to ask you if you would like to comment on this, what needs to be done indeed to ensure that visas are not so difficult for people from some parts of the world, some country in the world, where you, 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 you conclude by thinking you are some second citizen of this world because you cannot get a visa to go anywhere, including Africa. Thank you. Again, I think this is one of those uh, examples of what we say, and sometimes we agree upon, not only in Africa, it's not only at the level of African Union, even in our sub-regional uh, level, it's ECOWAS and uh, SADC, uh, uh, East Africa, etc., etc. Uh, we have discussed very for a long time this issue of regional integration and part of regional integration is exactly free movement for people and goods so that we also encourage intra-africa trade and you know again one thing is what we discussed but back home then we, 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 we still make the laws much tighter you are being very gentle yeah I, I'm sure you are raising this because uh, my second country which is South Africa has now tightened even much more I mean the immigration laws and everybody is, 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 is complaining I'm not in government so I can respond exactly what the challenges are what I'm saying is the more you 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 tighten in this, then you will encourage people to go underground. Because they will do it anyway. As I'm saying, the issue of movements, you will not going to, step, to, to stop it. It's better to accept that it's going to happen. How do we manage it better? And of course, you protect the borders. And when you protect the, the borders, it's not necessarily movements of people. I think we should protect ourselves against criminals. That's a different story. Because yes, you don't want cr crime also to be moving freely between, I mean, our countries. But there's a difference of a normal citizen who is looking for, I do not know, maybe it's business to live or it's to study somewhere else and the movement just to visit. It's a different thing in how do you spot and you neutralize criminals. So I think it's 
it's a, it's a big challenge for African countries. But it, only a few have managed, I mean, to, not to eliminate completely, but to lose, to lose out, I mean, the, the rules of visas. And it's, it's, it's a challenge, it's a challenge. I can't, I can't really give a, a response, but I know this is something we have to deal with. And even worse, because in our case, we have families who are living, I mean, cross borders. It's not even a question, a question of business. It's, it's families who have been divided by this Berlin conference, which is not our making, but we have not been able, I mean, to, to dismantle it. And because our families the other side, I have to go back and forth for good and sake. We are not going to solve it by tightening, but we have to lose. And my view is that, yes, we are not to sophisticate the system, to spot criminals, to prevent them of abusing the free movement to create problems to all of us. That's a different story. It should be put in a different level. I think it's uh, uh, one further question from the distinguished representative of Venezuela. Thank you, Director General. I uh, agree with the delegations uh, who have spoken before me on how extraordinary and significant it is to hear Ms. Uh, Marshall's uh, words. Uh, they're very important. I've taken note of some of the comments. And now I would like to just make a few comments. You said that it, we need to learn to live with diversity. And you also said that we have international humanitarian law, which is sophisticated. And another sentence which struck me is that you said that the value of human life changes uh, according to different circumstances. I would like to make some comments. Before 2008, when we saw one of the worst uh, crises uh, in terms of economics uh, arise, there was some openness towards migration and legislation which uh, had acceptable conditions and for life, uh, such as access to health, education, and other basic rights. This has now been closed down gradually, and we've seen a drastic uh, worsening of life for migrants. Uh, men, women, and children have had to return to the shadows. They've been afraid and constantly worried. My intention is not, of course, to uh, create uh, difficulties here by saying that uh, conditions have worsened in uh, high-income countries. I think it's a social and shared responsibility for all states and all governments, whether they are high-income, medium-income, or low-income countries. But the value of what you have said, that we need cooperation and dialogue between states, is essential. In any case, uh, if it is unacceptable for us to move backwards in this fight, uh, it is also unacceptable that some governments allow and uh, let uh, xenophobia take place. Uh, you've also said that uh, development through migration uh, is ex in existence, but uh, there are ethical problems that still need to be resolved. Uh, now, I'd like to know what is it that hasn't yet been done well? You spoke about a lot of things, but maybe you would have some more specific comments that you could make. Uh, from a point of view of the states, what has not been done well up until now? And perhaps uh, with your knowledge and experience, you could uh, talk of uh, matters that perhaps governments themselves cannot raise. What's the worst that we have done? What has made us fail in this area?
I think the, the, the delegate of Venezuela is asking me to repeat the whole of my speech <laughs> as far as what I thought government should do, because I, I, was, uh, I was trying really uh, without being I don't know what he means by being specific. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, expected to be talking of countries, but I think every region of the, the, the globe has systems. I mean, in terms, they, they, they are they are not only national legislation, but they are also regional agreements. And that is what I was saying that they have to be revisited. They have to be reshaped with the understanding that we are facing a reality in which it's not going to change, it's going to increase, but we have more advantage of allowing it to happen than trying to prevent it. That's what I said. And I think I can't be much more specific than this. Because the, 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 the question is, I take it to, to, to my own sub-region, if you want, SADC, you know, to say, we need to revisit SADC, and people from Mozambique should be free to move to Malawi and to, to, to Zimbabwe, to any other country without any problem. And what does it mean? That's what I suggest. Let's have a discussion in which not only it's a government issue, but it's a societal issue as well. Each one of us taking responsibilities in different levels in which we, are, we, we work. So in your case, I would just suggest, in your sub-region, as governments, as civil society organizations, as business, even if you like, this debate has to take place and to see how can we change. And I suggested even that we have the framework of the post-2015 agenda to see what do we improve in the next 15 years. And we gradually, I mean, allow a much more humane treatment to whoever who wants to move and has the ability to move. I don't think I can be much more specific than this. We have actually two more speak, two more questions on the list here. Would you be prepared to take the final two questions? Okay. Yeah, then first, let me start with the uh, ambassador of the African Union, Ambassador Ruzu. Je vous remercie beaucoup. Thank you very much. I. I'm very grateful for this invitation that was made to Ms. Grasha Machela to have been able to hear her brilliant expression. She says that she has no political responsibilities now, but she is a permanent conscience, a conscience that speaks on an everyday level. And I don't want to be too long, but I think that Ms. Grasa Machel should take up the pilgrims and speak to each of our governments about the work we need to do. Africa has always been waiting for solutions for others, was the solution for others, and now we are seen as the problem, and we now need to work on the solutions to solve our problems and that we can address the international community, and in particular Africa, to find the solutions. We are behind you, and we share the fight. It is the battle that the African Union also wishes to take on. Thank you. From the distinguished representative of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you, Chair. And a very pleasant morning to all. I wish to thank you specifically, ma'am, for your presentation, most informative and thought provoking. It has become customary for people to be nomadic within recent times. Um, we have found that people move from country to country, sometimes professionals for a better job, sometimes for a better life, sometimes, as we have seen within recent times, because of conflict. In circumstances that are not defined 
des situations qui ne sont pas forcément bien définies. Comment initial éléments initial of an international migration agenda that would satisfy easier movement of personnel from one country to another. I would be very pretentious if I would to say I can identify. I thought I had offered a framework around which revisiting and reshaping, I mean, our not only migration laws, but practices actually uh, should take place. But you, you, you mentioned uh, uh, some of the reasons uh, which uh, encourage people to move away, like better, you mentioned better life. Améliorer les conditions de vie. You mentioned conflict. Vous avez parlé aussi de fuir un conflit. One of the reasons why better life is not possible for laquelle in certain countries is less, less, less and less opportunities. And I mentioned the case of young women and young people in general to live and thrive. Pour vivre. So, if I want to reduce in my country, I want to reduce the incentive for them to move, it means I have to create better lives in, in my own country. I think that's one of the issues we have to take seriously. Because in some of our countries, it is not an issue of resources. It is a, a, a more the issue of how resources are being managed to allow citizens to live and thrive. De vivre et jouir de bonnes and even how to give or to provide young people with a quality education, quality skills in which they can take opportunities within their own country. We can do this and we should do it. We have to expand and create opportunities. And actually, I could go on and on and try to talk of the issue which is growing in many of our countries of inequality. Where resources are there, but the way resources are made are benefiting the majority of people, it is a big, big, big issue. So, I think, when I suggest to revisit, it means every country has to say, what is specifically the major issue which I have to resolve within my own country to allow citizens to live and thrive? That's how I put it. But you can't resolve the problem of migration alone. That's why I suggest the discussion at least at the sub-regional level. Because people move from one country to the other, so you have to have a common strategy as a sub-region. My brother, I think more than this I can't say. How to identify what is going to be the problem in, it, in tobacco. You know? uh, it's not going to be exactly the same thing which will be the major problem in Tanzania. It's not going to be exactly the same kind of a problem which will be in Colombia. So every country has to question itself. And in the regions where you are, to try, I mean, to sharpen the laws and the ways in which I want to insist is the way we try we treat other human beings. How do we treat one another as human beings? At the end of the day, it's not about only laws, it's not only about economy, it's not only about movement, it's about how we treat other human beings. And I think more than this, I, I don't think I would be able to, to say. Am I now allowed to sit down? <laughs>